Today on Let Them Talk TV, you're going to learn South African English. We're going to explore the accent and the vocabulary that reflects the nation's rich cultural tapestry. And to help me unpack this linguistic treasure, we have all the way from Johannesburg, South Africa, Brian. How's it, but? How's it, Gideon? <laughs> what is that? How's it, but? Did I say that correctly? Yes, you did. Perfect. Uh, so that means, how's it going, mate, or something like that? In more South or less, African English? More or less, how's it, brother? How's it, mate? Okay. It translates directly to brother. Ah, in, from Afrikaans? From Afrikaans, yes. Okay. Uh, okay, so first of all, people are dying to know, who are you? And can you tell us something about your accent? For sure. My name is Brian. I'm from Johannesburg, South Africa, and I have an Anglo-South African accent. When you say Anglo-South African, that means that your native language is English. Correct. You speak with South African English, but you're a native South African, whereas you have other ethnic groups who might speak English, but it's not their first language. Have I got that? Yeah, spot on. Um, most other South Africans will speak one of the 11 other official languages, with the 12th being sign language. But So what is the most widely spoken language in South Africa? I believe it's Zulu. Zulu. Where do the different languages belong? Which, where, where are the ethnic groups in terms of the map of South Africa? Well, for the largest languages, I could say Kwanzaa is uh, predominantly from the Eastern Cape. And then above that, we have Zulu uh, in the KwaZulu Natal. And in the rest of the provinces, you generally find that Afrikaans is probably the most widely spoken, except in the north, actually. You speak Afrikaans too, don't you? Yes, Afrikaans is my second language. Okay. And for people who don't know, Afrikaans is basically a version of Dutch, is that right? Yes, it's uh, basically an old version of Dutch. So you speak Afrikaans. Why is that? Did you learn it at school? Yes, I uh, had it as a mandatory subject uh, throughout uh, primary school and high school. But why did you learn Afrikaans and not Zulu, for example? Because for me, I thought it would be easier. Oh, it was your choice? Yes, we had the choice to choose um, any of the 12 languages as an additional language. Oh, really? Yes. Including sign language? Including sign language. Oh, well, that's, that's good. <laughs> so I was always under the impression that Afrikaans was the white man's language. But doing my research and speaking to you, that's, that's not the case, is it? Yeah, not at all. In fact, uh, <laughs> I believe the colours uh, make up a larger population of Afrikaans speakers in South Africa, even right. larger than the, the whites. Right. Okay. It's very interesting you say coloreds, because that word anywhere else in South Africa would be completely taboo. I would never call somebody uh, a, a colored unless I wanted to get my uh, a face uh, s smacked. Uh, but it's OK in the context of uh, ethnic groups in South Africa. People identify as coloreds. Yes, exactly. You don't have to stress about using the word colored in South Africa because it specifically references to an ethnic group that we have. Even 30 years after apartheid, people still self-identify as coloreds. Oh, for sure, and proudly. So how many people in South Africa speak English as a first language and where do they speak it? Jeez, I'm not sure of the exact numbers. <laughs> Don't worry, I have the right, I have the numbers. I put them uh, on the screen, okay. okay. But it's a minority of people who speak English as a first language, isn't it? Yes, it is a minority of people who uh, speak English as a first language. But generally, everybody does to get by. It's the, it's the language we have in common. So that's the, the, as a second language? As a second But language. you're a minority as a first language? Yes, I'm lucky enough to have it as a first language. A and where do they speak English as a first language? Typically in the major cities, uh, you'll find Anglo-South Africans. But uh, in the farmlands too. It really depends on where you go. Okay. Know. You are, if I'm not mistaken, a white South African. Yes. Now, black speakers of English, do they, I get the impression they have a different accent because I've heard like Nelson Mandela and others speaking English and their accent is quite different to yours. So is that right? They're different amongst black South Africans, uh, coloreds, whites? 
I would say that each ethnicity has a very distinct accent mm -hmm. uh, in English, um, including Anglo-South Africans, which would differ from English as other people would be used to it. And the Afrikaans speakers also have a, um, a different accent too. Very, very distinguishable. In a few minutes, we're going to look at the phonetics of South African English and some slang colloquial expressions. However, perhaps it'd be interesting if you can tell us just in general terms uh, how South African English differs from Englishes of other parts of the world, British English, I'm British, so compared to mine or American English. Is the slang difference different, for example? Uh, yes, we have vastly different slang that is from across the different languages we have as well. Um, it is quite hybridized with other languages, particularly with Afrikaans and with Zulu. But generally, I'd say it's mostly our pronunciation that's different. With the slang words, we, you would have some from Afrikaans, some from Zulu and other languages too. From Kosa as well, Pedi, we have a wide selection to choose from. Now, you mentioned Kosa. Yes. Because that is a language with clicks, isn't it? It is. It's actually claws or something. Yeah, if I'm going to try to pronounce it correctly, it'll be Kwaza. Kwaza, I can't do it. Also, I, I know from my research that there are uh, so-called, is it Asian South Africans? Yes. Who are from India. Is that they originally from the Indian subcontinent? That's correct. Um, I believe we have the largest um, concentration of ethnic Indians outside of India in the world. But they didn't come to South Africa recently. They came... Centuries ago? They came not recently nor voluntarily, uh, but they came uh, centuries ago as uh, slaves of the British, I believe. And so the languages in South Africa are often divided in racial terms, and that's because of apartheid. So even 30 years after apartheid, it's still divided like that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, for those of you who don't know, apartheid translates directly to live apart. And that's exactly what it was. It was to separate the different races into groups. And as a result, people tend to keep their languages a lot more than in other places. In Johannesburg itself, the city you're in, is that's an English-speaking what enclave, we could say? Or are there lots of languages in Johannesburg? Johannesburg, I'd say, is more of a mixing pot. If you're looking for an English-speaking enclave, Cape Town more. Oh, Cape Town, okay. So if I were to visit, what would you recommend that I do? I would recommend the Kruger National Park and the Garden Route, for sure. T tell, tell us more. All right. Kruger National Park, you have the opportunity to see the big five, which are lion, elephant, buffalo, rhinoceros, and leopard, mm -hmm. which are five of the rarest animals you could see in Africa. Mm -hmm. and you have the opportunity to see all five of them in that park. The big five, they're called. The big five, they're called. Yeah, we don't have any of the big fives here in this mm. eastern Paris suburb. Not at all. Not, <laughs> Maybe in the no, zoo. <laughs> you might see a pigeon occasionally. <laughs> and the other is the garden route, which for me is my personal favourite. The garden route, what's that? It is um, a road trip from Durban to Cape Town. Right. Where you have the opportunity to see amazing coastlines um, and a very diverse change. Uh, topography as well. Okay. And in terms of uh, towns and cities, which are the, the ones that we should uh, look out for? I'd recommend Cape Town. I'd recommend Pretoria, the capital. Mm -hmm. And I would recommend Bloemfontein, actually. Bloemfontein. 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 Okay, I hope you're making notes. Uh, right, and South Africa, what else can we say? You had, you had the World Cup there yeah, recently. Fun. Very fun times in 2010. Really yeah. Good memories did, for me. Did you say, see any games? I did. I saw the final, actually. Okay. And you, you won the Rugby World Cup? Frequently, yes. And you play cricket? Sometimes. Anything else you want to add about South Africa that maybe the, the viewers don't know? We have a good sense of humour. And one thing, maybe not so uh, positive, I've read that South Africa is the most unequal society in the world, the gap between rich and poor, is, is that right? That is unfortunately true, yes. And how does that manifest itself in day-to-day -day life? Can you notice that on the streets of 
Johannesburg. <laughs> very much so. Um, there are very telling signs as to uh, an unequal society in South Africa. I would say the most telling is our minimum wage, which is very low in comparison to developed nations. Oh, really? Yes. So if you've got a, like, a good middle class job, you're doing pretty well, exactly. uh, even compared to European countries, you're okay, but the minimum wage is... Is extremely low. So for poor people, it can be difficult to get by in the modern world. Okay. Right, Brian, we've got phonetics. Before we do this, by the way, South African English, the spelling and the vocabulary, it's closer to British English than American English, isn't it? Yes, exactly. We, uh, we use the British spelling and vocabulary for things. So, you, so centre is spelt... R-E. Okay. There you are. That's good. And uh, do you say lorry or truck? It's a lorry. Do you say sidewalk or pavement? Clearly it's a pavement. <laughs> okay. Do you say the way out or the exit? The way out. There you are. British. Okay, but, the, but now we're going to go into the differences, or mostly differences, and that is phonetics. First of all, the V's sometimes pronounced more like an F sound. So I have a sentence here, which I'm going to read in my fine Southern British English. A velvety vision of vitality in the valley. How would you say that? I'm going to give my best Afrikaans accent here, and I'm going to say a velvety vision of vitality in the valley. Okay, thanks. And in, and, and in your softer South African accent, how would you say it? A velvety vision of vitality in the valley. Okay, so, so I can hear the, the, the difference, but also I can still, even in your softer accent, I can still hear that it's different to mine. Next one, the... I sound in flying is more like an I, is that right? Correct. So the sentence I have, once again, you can do two versions or three versions, whatever you want. The sentence I have, flying kites in daylight was a nice sight, right? Flying kites in daylight was a nice sight, right? Okay, right. And in my own, I would say flying kites in daylight is a nice sight. Right? Okay. Yeah. So it's kind of halfway between yes. that one's sort of halfway between yours and mine, your normal accent. Okay. Next, the R sound. And it's kind of, I wouldn't say rolled, but you say the R's quite strongly at the beginning of words. It is. I would also say it's halfway between a roll and just a stronger sound. Okay. For us. Right. So the example I have. The rising sun rose resplendently over the horizon. The rising sun rose resplendently over the horizon. The rising sun... No, I'm not going to even try. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, uh, okay. And for me, normally, I would say that the rising sun rose resplendently over the horizon. Okay. I still hear a little bit of a, an R sound, yeah. It, it is still It is there. a kind of a, a halfway house. Okay, next one. The T ending. It's a very, very strong T's at the end of words. So the example I have, the rent the artist got for the boat. The rent the artist got for the boat. Okay, yeah, that's a strong T. Yes, at the end specifically, it's much stronger. Mm -hmm. Okay, and in your action? And in mine, I would say that the rent the artist got for the boat. Okay, but you do pronounce it. You don't have glottal stops like I might do in my accent. I might say, got for the boat. That doesn't exist so much. Got for the boat? Yeah. Is that right? <laughs> yes. You don't have those glottal stops? No, we don't have them. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, that's quite common in my accent, but I'm not doing them now. I'm reading it in more classical style. The T's starting a word are also much more pronounced. So, for example... In my accent, I would say, taxis in Cape Town are too troubling. Taxis in Cape Town are too troubling. Too troubling. Exactly. Wow, <laughs> you really hit those feet, don't you? Without mercy. <laughs> okay. uh, and do, uh, do you use that? Do you hit them hard? No, personally, I don't. I would just say the taxis in Cape Town are too troubling. 
some diphthongs, such as the diphthong in face, or monothongs. Did I say diphthongs or diphthong, diphthongs? It's diphthongs, isn't it? I think it's diphthongs, isn't it? Yeah. I played for a day at the base. I played for a day at the base. So played, you say played. Played. Played for the yeah. day at the base, okay? And in your accent, it's... It's the same, actually. Same. I played for a day at the base. Yeah. I see, so you say base, not base. I say base. Base. This is something that is quite, quite similar to uh, my accent. The South African accent is non-rhotic, and that means that the R at the end of words and before consonants are not pronounced. So, for example, and this should be quite similar between our accents, the mother's car murdered the bird. The mother's, my mother's car murdered the bird. Yeah. Is okay. that the same? It's the same. Okay. Yeah, they're the same. But in American English, you would you would say the R's. You say car. I can't do American. Forgive me, Americans out there. I can, you say car and a bird. So you, you, you say the R. You would? So my mother's car murdered the bird? Something like that. I'm not, I'm, I'm not teaching you American English. Don't, Forgive don't, me. Don't go there. I'm not you go. We'll leave, we'll leave that to, to an American. But, but it's non-rhotic. However, it's an important point. So pay attention. One difference in, is that in the South African accent, there is no linking R. Now, in my accent, and many British accents, we have a linking R. What do I mean by that? So, for example, I would say far round away. You see, far ends in an R, and the next word begins in an A. So I'd link the R together. Far round away. Here and there. Is there any point? Is there any point, Brian? Is there any point? So you don't link it, do you? you don't no. Have a Renny. There's we no Renny in your accent. Never. We never <laughs> okay. Linked. Uh, also, no intrusive R. I saw a film. I saw a film. That's called an intrusive R because no, the R is not written. But you don't say that in South Africa, do you? I saw a film. There's no R film. Never. Okay. Or there's no intrusive Y. Lie on the bed. Lie on the bed. That's called an intrusive Y. You don't have that. that sounds bizarre. No, I lie on the bed. Okay. Because what many British people find difficult is putting two vowels together, so they like to sort of sandwich it between a, a, a consonant. Yes, I don't think we do that. Okay. There's also, by the way, a linking W, oh. which we have, like, for example, go out. Go out the, the, the room, Brian. Okay. <laughs> but you don't say go out. No, we would say go out. Go out, which is how it's written, so fair enough. But which is different in South African English. How so? In most Englishes around the world, the before a consonant, but before a vowel, it becomes the, the end, the apple. But in South African English, you don't have this the. Yep, we just say the. So the end, the, the end. The end. Yeah. Why change it? What's the point? The, <laughs> the English apple. Ah, the English apple. No, the English apple. The English apple. Okay, all right. So it is different. That's true then. Uh, and the other thing is how you use just now. Now, just now for me is something that is in the past. When did you see him? Oh, yeah, just now. But it's more complicated than that in South African English. Is that not right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, we can use it for uh, either the future or the past. How can you use it for the future? So, for the future, we could say, he is arriving just now. That's really confusing to me, because you're mm. talking about the future, then you're talking about the past, but you're not, of course, because in South African English, that means he'll be arriving shortly. Well, I like to think that the thing that gives away that it's in the future is is rather than was. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Okay, okay, so look out for that. Listen, you won't get confused if you know that. Now, 
you like this bit. We've got some South African expressions and slang. I'm going to say a sentence in my British English and you're going to say it in South African English. Bloody hell. You can't get any more beers from that guy at the bar. I Connor, you can't get more quotes from that oak at the shebang. Okay, so I Connor. Bloody hell, surprise. Bloody hell, yes. Okay. A lot uh, of surprise. Of course, it's just a beer, is it? This is a... Yeah, one litre of beer okay. in, a, in a glass bottle. Okay, and oak is a guy. A dude, yes. A dude. Oh, it's yeah. a dude. And Shabin. Is a, is a, like a, well, like a speakeasy or something? Exactly, yeah. It's a, I wouldn't say a non-legal bar, but an unofficial bar. Okay. It's okay. usually someone who's turned their house into a bar. Oh. It's happened a lot? Very often. Okay. Did you turn your house into a bar? Not yet, but the renovations are coming. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next one. Let's have a barbecue with some sausages and watch the rugby game together. Let's buy some boravos and watch the rugby game together. But That was a great party we had last night, but I had too much to drink and now I've got a dreadful hangover. That was a liquor jaw last night, but I had too many dogs and now I've got a Dreadful bubbleless. 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 Yes. Hangover. Okay. Nice. We've been stuck at the traffic lights for forty minutes, mate. I'm totally fed up. We've been stuck at the robots for forty minutes, bro. I'm totally hurtful. Now there's a bit to unpack here. Robots. Traffic lights. Now you told me when we were talking about this video uh, that when you came to France you were talking with your friends with your partner about robots and they were confused yes exactly uh, they thought it was I was talking about machines in the streets while giving them directions so I had to change it to traffic lights in my personal vocabulary but in South Africa we refer to traffic lights as robots so you were saying like oh turn left at the robots yes and then... people were saying are you talking about? Is there a robot? Yes, uh, they, the they expect the Terminator at the end of the street. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and what is this? Hatvol? It's fed up. To be fed up. In Afrikaans? Exactly. Okay. Yeah, I went camping in the Kruger with my mate and we saw some lions, elephants and antelope. It was really great. Yeah, well, I went camping in the Kruger with my chummy. And we spotted some lions, elephants, and buck. It was kiff. Chummy. So it's like chum, like you might say. Yeah, like chum. Um, I think it's the Afrikaans version of chum. Okay. Okay. And um, uh, kiff. G great. Rad. Cool. Wow. I went surfing with my girlfriend at Ellen's Bay. It was great. Ish. I went surfing with my Macy in Ellen's Bay. It was tight. Okay, so Macy's girlfriend. Girlfriend. And tight means great. Cool. cool. Yes. Okay. But I must say that Macy directly translated is girl. But colloquially, it's girlfriend. Okay. Hey, mate, who was that bird I saw you talking to? People are going to gossip. Yeah, but who was that bint I saw you talking to? People are going to skin it. Can you say bint? Is it a case of maybe yes, maybe no? Yes, uh, it's a case of maybe yes, maybe no. Um, I would maybe avoid it, unless you're very comfortable. <laughs> okay, all right, but people say it, don't they? And, uh, people do say it. I guess I use the term bird, which is the same. Some people think that's okay. They don't say it. Hey, stop stressing, mate. Load shedding will stop soon, probably. Ah, stop stressing, China. Load shedding is supposed to end now, now. Quite a few things to unravel here. Um, China, is that like the Cockney China plate, mate? I think it is, yes. So some of the South African English comes from Cockney. Yeah, it really is a mixing pot. 
Ach, we didn't say, Ach is, hey, what? Af, ach is Afrikaans, I believe, as well. And it's just, ah, damn, hell. And uh, this one I can translate. I can find the English version. So load shedding. Yes, so load shedding, uh, if other South Africans are watching this, you're probably laughing, uh, is the uh, systemic rolling blackouts we have due to lack of electrical infrastructure. Oh. Yeah, not bad. Sounds serious. Yes. So the air cons don't work sometimes. Yeah, and especially when you need them. <laughs> okay. And uh, now, now, some indefinite point in the future, but you don't know when. Yes. That's how I understood it. Now, now, I guess, would mean eventually. Uh, but generally, it's something you'd say to someone when you don't want to give them a specific time frame. Well, but th thanks for doing this video together. Come back, well, maybe not today or tomorrow, but now, now, <laughs> do another video together. How does that sound? Sounds great. I'll check you later, but. Okay. Um, is there any way I can say bye bye in um, South African English? Shop shop. Shop shop, everybody. Shop. Bye.